And so I had to begin to look at the issue of selfishness. How many of you ever have noticed that you at one point in time have been selfish? Nobody in the church willing to confess now. And uh, we're not passing out maps, so they don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 14. The original demonstration of selfishness is recorded in the book of Isaiah chapter number 14 uh, from verse 12. He said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Hallelujah. Uh, we, we, we know him to be the devil, uh, we call him by different kinds of names, but his original name that was given to him before his fall, and, and the root cause of his fall is why we're looking at this morning, his name was Lucifer, which means son of the morning. Uh, he Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, I think chapter 38, uh, so that he was the, you know, the covering chill. He was one of the angels that was created Lucifer and uh, there are basically three angels that are mentioned in the scriptures and uh, we talk about the angel Michael and we talk about the angel Gabriel and we talk about Lucifer they all are the three major angels there might be several ones but these are the ones that are mentioned by name and this morning Oh, come on, you need to be talking to me this morning. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Can I have people in the house say amen? amen. Now, I know that I'm dealing with a subject that might touch you a little bit, but you don't be happy. Tell somebody to be happy. Amen. It's not about you directly. It might affect you indirectly, but be happy. Amen. amen. Uh, so, you know, uh, so Lucifer was one of the angels that was created, the archangels, created and mentioned by name. And the Bible says he was the overcovering child in the book of Ezekiel uh, 28 or so. He was overcovering child. And that means he was standing in the presence of God. And the Bible talks about Lucifer that he was, uh, he had the instruments of music in him. He was the melody in heaven. He was in the presence of God. He was the one that was standing face to face with God. He was the one that was walking upon the stones of the fire in the presence of God. How many will you have to be able to approach the I am that I am without having to have to talk to Lucifer and have to pass through Lucifer? Are you understanding me? And so the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? How art thou cut down? Why are you cut down to the ground? Uh, because uh, you did weaken the nation. What is the strategy that the enemy uses? And uh, we now call him an enemy, uses to weaken every nation. And when we talk about nation, it's not about, if we talk about South Africa, we're not talking about the map, we're talking about people in South Africa. Amen. So how did you succeed to weaken the nation? What is your strategy that you use to destroy so many? What is the strategy? How did you come about it? What is that particular powerful force that the enemy uses? Uh, the Bible says that we to analyze this strategy and it's going to be summarized into one word. For thou hast said in thy heart, this is, this is what happened. Somebody say, he said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. Somebody say, ah. So the first word there is I. You know, not we, not them, it's I. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also can be scrub up a little bit. I will sit also upon the mount. Uh, who's sitting on it? Somebody in the computer there. 
Are you alive? Okay, thank God. Uh, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sight of the north. I will, somebody say, I will. I will. I sing above the heights of the cloud. And the last one is, I will be like the most high. Every word there is about self. Did you notice that? Everything about the I will, I will is all about him. So the root cause of the fall of Lucifer is selfishness. And the root cause of the fall of every man is selfishness. Um, now, thank Dr. Yannick was a thank God you came to church today. Might not succeed to have you another Sunday. <laughs> but you're already here. Help me lock the doors, don't let anybody in. But you know what? You know, if you look at the scripture there, everything there is I. I will, I will, I will about five or four if you count them I. There is nothing that has to do with any other person except himself. Until it comes to the point he says, I will be like the most high God. I will be like the most high God. Lucifer was highly exalted, glorious being who was not satisfied with his position. Because he wanted to have dominion for himself, he sought the Almighty God as his rival, being content with God. And his rebellious act, you know, you know, entice. And another way, let's, 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 let's walk this through together. Give me a little bit of time and let you go. And when he did, now look at the last one, I'll be like the most high God. When Lucifer came to the garden of Eden, what was he saying? What did he say? He said, did God say anything? He said, you will be like. It's about the promotion of self. The only reason that, you know, the women and the people, you know, let say, the folks in the Garden of Eden fell was because they were lured to selfishness. It is, if you eat the fruit, you will be like, it's all about you. It's not about what God said anymore. So you find that our selfishness is a foundation for the fall of man. And it's still the foundation of the trouble and sins in life. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Are you still here? Amen. Okay, you happy you still love me today? Thank God. You still have it in your heart. But you know what? Selfishness is the root cause of every of our problem. We are always tempted and lured to fall because we are selfish. The reason that man, I mean, you know, God said, have all the entire fruit in the garden except this one. But because he wants to have it for himself, he disobeyed God. So Lucifer fell out of selfishness and he came to propagate the gospel of selfishness. The most difficult people to deal with in life are selfish people, not poor people, not rich people, not short people, not tall people, not white, green, blue, or red folks. It's not about size. The most difficult people you can ever have in your life. How many of you have met somebody who's selfish in Singapore? Nothing works 
and said, it is on my D and C. Terms and conditions. No matter how good you, you see, you know, selfishness will even make one of them jump, but that is the entire cause of everything. There are people in government who are selfish, that they will never implement what is meant for the community, not because they came now, but because they are selfish. So selfishness is the bedrock of the crisis of life. And Lucifer came in to begin to propagate the gospel of selfishness. So he lived all selfish. We want things for ourselves. You see, you see uh, when, when the Holy Spirit began to show me in a new dimension of things, I began to say, because it's, you know, Jesus said, unless you die, why would Jesus be so happy? If you look at the book of Matthew, uh, I know, chapter 19, verse 21, you will never see it. Look at Matthew 19, 21. 19, 21. This is the man who came to Jesus. You remember the story. And Jesus said unto him, Can we, you know, you go read it because I'm calling some because of time. Jesus said unto him, Can you read? Let's read in the 18 first. You know, 18, maybe 17 upward. Let's go back to 17. Uh, go back to 16. I just want to feed you in because if I jump in, some of you may not have it completely. And behold, one came unto him and said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may do what have eternal life? What a noble question. What a spiritual person. Hello? Did he come to Jesus for anything? Master, good master, I didn't come to church for anything but for Jesus. Amen. Good master, what must I do that I may have eternal life? Uh, and Jesus said, Why do you call me good? There is none that is good but one, and that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. The commandments. And he said unto him, Which commandment? And this is, this is a conversation taking place between Jesus and this spiritual man. And Jesus said, Thou shalt do, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not be a false witness, honor thy father, thy mother. And thou shalt not be able as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things, somebody said, All these things, oh. have I kept from my youth up? What else do I need? <laughs> do you see that? He said, All of that, you know, is this about the commandments. I am good at them. I keep everything. And, and, and let me tell you that this man was not lying. Hello. Jesus, so if he did not keep his commandment, Jesus would have said, You are lying. He said, All of the commandments, I have kept the ten commandments from my youth, from the age of knowledge of good and evil, which the, about the age of 12, I have kept all the commandments, Jesus. And Jesus looked at him, let's say. And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give them to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. <laughs> he touched where he shouldn't touch. Touch the tiger by tail. I've kept the commandments. You see, you see, uh, tonight I was just uh, under research and reading and all, and I began to say, why? You know, because I talk about the Pharisees. I don't know if you know, Jesus seemed to have some kind of problem with the Pharisees. He didn't kind of like the Pharisees. I don't know if you know this in the Bible. Yes. And, and he 
said the Pharisees were righteous. And, and so the Pharisees were somehow better than some of us. Because they said, except your righteousness, and exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. So the Pharisees had a level of righteousness that some of us cannot match. So Jesus said, except your righteousness, exceed those of the Pharisees. You do, you cannot enter. So the Pharisees had a level of righteousness. So if the Pharisee had a level of righteousness, why did he not appreciate them? Why did Jesus not appreciate the Pharisees? Because he acknowledged that they were righteous. He acknowledged that they were better. He told the disciples, unless you are able to perform better than the Pharisees, you too, you might not enter. So what was it that he had against the Pharisees? That he, the, the Pharisees' righteousness did not appeal to Jesus. The only thing that he had against the Pharisees was what I'm talking about, selfishness. That they were righteous was for themselves. Because he said, do not be like the Pharisees who when they pray, they stood at the junction so that people may see because it's, your prayer is not really about prayer, but it's about that people will see that you are Oh Lord, talk to me this morning. Are you, are you understanding me? He said, when you give your hands, do not give them like the Pharisees who do it openly so that people will see what they are doing. Because it's not about what giving, it's about them. So you can be righteous, you can do what is good, but about for you. You can do it. But as long as it makes you feel like I am the man, <laughs> they're not talking to me folks. Yeah. As long as it makes you, so that was the Pharisees right to, they do all, they pay their tithes. As long as people know and appreciate, he pays his time faithfully. It's not for the glory of God, for self aggrandizing for ego, for me, for people to know that I, that they look at me as they don't understand what I'm talking about. It was about them, not really about God. So this man fulfilled the Ten Commandments, but it was not for the glory of God. It was so that he can come and talk to Jesus. Tell me which one do I seem to be? I have kept it all from the time. Hello. Yeah. And he expect Jesus to say, wow, you know what, you are one of a kind. <laughs> Never seen a folk like you. Come on. And Jesus look at you in his selfish keeping of oh, Jesus. In the keeping of the commandment for himself, not to please God, but for himself, you know, a boosting. And Jesus said, okay, have you really kept it? He said, I kept everything right from the time I was above. Never, never break any of them. Never, never break. Jesus said, no, look at me. <laughs> Just look at me from head to toe. You know me. I, I kept it all. And Jesus looked at him and said, okay, now if you kept it all, you kept it for yourself. Now I'm going to touch where I, you don't like. The Bible says, and Jesus said, if thou will be perfect, if thou will be morally upright, the word perfect means that, go and sell that thou hast and give it to, to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and do what? And follow me. Look at verse 22. Are you there? Amen. But when a young man heard that say, he went his way, what? He went sad. Never come to that church again. <laughs> that Jesus church is too much. <laughs> I know why folks don't like the rock. It's too much. 
no, no, no. Maybe she just allow people to be free. Hello. Amen. Let's leave that church and go to the other, go to some embassy, you know, people embassy church. <laughs> just go there, you know, and where you are free, do your things, you know. They, they, they demand you too much. Who do they think they are? That is true. But about to he let so you see, 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 see you gotta know why certain people have to leave your life. You might be crying for them, but they left because they're too selfish. They can't stand your liberality. How many of you ever mm, I'm not gonna How many of you have a friend that gives out something and you feel sad about it? That is too much. <laughs> All these poor people, they're always standing in the street begging. Give him five rand, not ten rand. <laughs> ten rand is too much for the poor. Can I have a witness in that? You really say it was in your heart. It's too much. People are giving him, other people are giving him. Give him two rand. Bring out ten rand. Mm -mm. Leave these people at home. I have two rand change. And look, I don't want to see you have been in the church today. Give him two rand change. You will suddenly have a change. Because you feel that the ten rand was too much. You just reverse your car and check. You don't have coins. And you take out the ten rand to give to the guy and say, come, 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 come. And your neighbor, he's not, he's not this one, he said, I have coins. <laughs> you know, offer. I have come because it, it's too much. Why did you do it? Because it wasn't it because of self. And they're not like me in the church today. <laughs> no, they, 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 all of a sudden they have, I have changed. I'm not here. I have changed. How many of you have coins in your car, especially kept? <laughs> For those people. <laughs> because you know, <laughs> if you bring out something right like this thing, you put it and almost in your pocket. <laughs> you start looking for <laughs> we have people in the church Sunday morning. I don't have that. How many of you? Now, why didn't you do it? Jesus said to him, Go and sell everything that you have. Come and follow me. Since you are that righteous, the Bible says he went home sad. Never attended Jesus' meeting again. <laughs> Let Jesus church never come back again. No matter how you evangelize, no matter what excellence, they will never come back because it's too much. You're always talking about tight and money. How many of you feel offended with money in the church? Know why you feel offended? Because of mm, And you get offended. They're always talking about money, money. And you talk about, are you looking for money? How many of you don't look for money? <laughs> How many of you, if they give you money, you say, no, I don't want to. I don't want, I don't want money. <laughs> How many of you don't want money? And you like when they talk about money as is a game. How many of you attend a business seminar to make new source of income? Yes. If there's a seminar to bring extra source of income, you register. Yes. Because it's coming to me. <laughs> but when it is going up at church, I think the pastor has suddenly, you know, our pastor is no longer spiritual. He's not dealing with deliverance. He's not talking about time to much. He's no longer. You will you know, you know Pastor Michel. He was a prayer warrior, Kabasat. But now, it's all what he talks about tight. No day he preached. He has fallen. Let's keep him in prayer. <laughs> because it's, you know, it has to come out of you. 
<laughs> you know, you see, I, I know this thing about selfishness because I suffer it. Most of the problem in relationship is selfishness. Selfishness. Must be my own way. People in the church, uh, and, and, and this is you see, you see, when you, you see, if you can deal with the issue of selfishness on a personal note, your life will change. Amen. Your life will automatically change. Things around you will change when you are succeed to deal with it. Things around you will change. If any man will come after me and be my disciple, why is that condition of being my disciple? Why can't I come after you, follow you in the way I am? Luke 9, 23, 24. If any man will come after me and be my disciple, let him do what? Deny himself, take up his cross daily. Selfishness has to be dealt with daily and follow me. For whosoever will save, preserve his life, shall lose it. But I say unto you, whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. That is the condition for following Jesus Christ. Why would he put that such a heavy condition? Because the root cause of the problem in our lives is selfishness. It was transmitted directly from the devil. The devil said, I, 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 and so when the devil comes in, it's about I. Mm, that's that's true. When he comes in, it's about I. It's all about me. Nothing more. What is it in for me? How many of you have heard that? What is there for me? How many of you have said that before? Selfishness leads to murder. The first, you will sometimes read in the papers, man and woman will take a gun, kill, kill his brother, kill the children. Kill. How many ever had that kind of thing? Why is it that? Selfishness. If I'm not happy, you're not happy. How many of you live with people like that? Once they're not happy, you get happy. Nothing bothers you. <laughs> because you seem to be happy, and he or she is not happy. So you must decide. How many of you have that kind of folks that are if it's not happy, it comes your brain ready. Turn off this news. What can <laughs> Can this television rest? How many people say something like that? You just turn on the let this television rest. And you work. <laughs> you are not happy. Somebody who else was not watch TV. How many of you like that? You turn on the TV. They are making noise. Only when you are watching. It's not noise. How many of you ever turn off TV out of annoyance? Because other people are watching and you're not happy. I need peace. <laughs> Is your peace inside the TV? <clears throat> Coming to the house, not happy. Turn off the TV. Even turn off the microwave. <laughs> And you forgot that they were warming food for you, turn it off. Genesis chapter 4, verse 8 to 7. Selfishness. I'm, I'm trying to bring you to this awareness because once you are able to understand this, you'll be able to deal with so many life crises and issues. You're going to be able to deal with 
The man may be a bad person. You see, in the hands of society, you have to accept. Am I acting out of selfishness? Because why you can relate with other people is because you're selfish. You make and break friends like a second breaker. <laughs> make today break. Once they didn't smile the way you did it. How many of you leave people because they don't walk the way you walk? I don't like the way she walks. They will, if they're going to go with you, they must walk in your style. <laughs> you walk like this. I don't walk with this. <laughs> Simply because it doesn't walk to your standard. You're selfish. You can't stand other people. Look at verse 8. And came down with Abel his brother, and he came to pass when they were in the field that came, rose up against Abel his brother, and killed him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is your brother? Abel, my brother. And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> Am I supposed to be in charge of his life? <laughs> uh, what did you say? Am I, I mean, that, that is not my name. Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> Talk to him, not me. Why do you ask me about him? Why do you ask her about me? Ask him. Am I his keeper? Selfishness. The least of all that. Why did he kill his brother? He was selfish. He was selfish. Abel brought good stuff to sacrifice to God. He brought whatever he found. And God said, no, I like this one. I don't like this one. And he get jealous. Selfishness is a root of jealousy. Mm. That's true. I wish it was me. Mm. Okay, am I helping somebody? When people see someone is too jealous, it's out of selfishness. Why are you there talking with you? When I'm dating you, you always talk. Why, why is it that you like talking with boys? What is it? Our boys not human beings. <laughs> Should be talking with cows. <laughs> you are talking with girls all the time. Out of what? Jealousy. Selfish. Because I'm thinking of myself. Not thinking, if talking with every other person makes you happy, most of the morals that are killed in love relationship is out of selfishness. Pull out the door, I'm not happy. I feel like dying. All of you must die with me. I don't want to die with you. Let me leave, man. If you finish your life, I'm not finished, my mom. But selfishness will make them kill every other person, even kill innocent children. That has nothing to do with adult nonsense. You pull out the gun and you kill them. Selfishness. That's, that's the root cause of the problem in our lives and the society. People being extra selfish. And some of you should notice when you fall in love, I don't, I don't even fall with those who are jealous. Why were you smiling when he passed? <laughs> and you didn't even know. You answer, why were you smiling? Why were your eyes looking like that? Why are you looking at that? No, I didn't look at that. I was seeing the car. Which car? There was no car. I was watching you. Why do you have to watch my eyes? <laughs> Because it's all about you. 
than unto them. Amen. You know, giving, giving a bell out of selfishness, it has nothing. It was, you know, I mean, there was no competition involved here. It was not the decision of a bell. It was the decision of God who we should receive and who should not offering he should receive. But because selfishness gives birth to jealousy, and jealousy, when it is full, begin to manifest in diverse ways. As scripture struck me so deep that I have not noticed, First John chapter three, verse fourteen. First John chapter three, <coughs> verse fourteen. I'll let you go because it's not exhaustive. I might come. Now, let me not say I will continue in Sunday so that you come to church. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we do what? We love the brethren. Listen to that. We, you know that you have passed from death unto life because you love one another. But he, he that loves not his brother do what? Abide in death. If you cannot love somebody without anything gainful for you, in it, you have not passed from dead. You are still operating with the principle of death, which is selfishness. I love you for what I can get. Once I cannot get it from you, I don't love you again. How many of you experience that? The day you said no, are you the only one? There are many of you. <laughs> All of a sudden they find out there were many of you. But before that they didn't find out there were many of you. Just because you said no. Selfishness. Somebody said selfishness. Selfishness. And, 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 and it goes on and on in our lives. It affects us. When you are a child of God and Christ has entered into your life, you learn to love. You are not in the disposition to love, but you have to learn. And you learn to love when you are able to deny yourself for the pleasure of another person. For the satisfaction of another person. I said it that the first time somebody died in the church was because of selfishness. That's how God looked at it. And I said Sapphira. They died because of selfishness. They did things for themselves. And, 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 they, and, and they acted as if nothing happened. Can kill ever because of selfishness. Killed them because of selfishness. And many all of us have killed other people. How many of you run people down with your mouth because you don't like them? Just run them. You don't like them. You say things that are uncomplimentary. Nobody wants to confess this. He has not done anything against you, but you don't like. How many of you have people like that in their life that you don't like? Yeah, how many, come on, come on now. How many of you have people that you don't like? I didn't say it's a sin now, I'm just saying you don't like them. I don't know what they did to you, but you just don't like them. They're in your life, you don't. You don't like them. They are like that. And if I examine why you don't like them, it's because of you. No, I'm just protecting myself from them. Why do you have to protect yourself? Why are you so self-conscious? Why are you so self-conscious? If you deny yourself, and then you will, you will be able to see differently from that perspective. But if you are so self-conscious, 
everything must be about you. I will not say it's a wrong spirit. It brings contention. How many of you, when you're angry, you want people to leave your room? Don't talk to me. You want to not see anger by yourself. You want to just be on yourself. Give me space. How many of you like your space? When you begin to have space, it's selfish. Selfishness won't make you have space. I need my space. <laughs> because it's about you. Even people are coming to say so, they say, please, please. Thank you, sorry. They must not even appeal you because you, you, you like it when you How many of you like it when you are angry? And people surround you and begin to say, sorry, 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 sorry. And they want to be you, sorry.
because of selfishness, unforgiveness, murder. Every the foundational root of sin in every life is selfishness. That was what was planted into Adam. And that's what we grew up with. Being selfish. So that even when we say we love each other, I love you, the only she let my team. And then you stay two days. One sleeping facing east, another one is facing west on the same day. How many of you did it before? <laughs> Sleep first and second. Don't touch me. We remove your leg. <laughs> Husband and wife. Don't let your leg touch me. You keep the blanket, I see the blanket. It's on the fire. Side the blanket. Meanwhile, it is love. <laughs> Or oh, you sit down and you watch TV till the TV watch you. <laughs> you are asleep. You are asleep. You are asleep and angry in front of the TV. <laughs> Instead of going to sleep, <laughs> you're angry. You and the TV is now watching you. You still angry. They say, no, won't you come and say, leave me. Because you need to be taught. You need to be appealed. Self. Self. If you can deal with it. I came to realize. You see, I, I, I'm just standing on some. Because, you know, I begin to, you know, as I couldn't sleep when I realized so much of the scripture that is on selfishness in the Bible that we never talk about. And this is a foundational problem that me and you have. And I can see why Jesus was saying, if you come after me, then deny yourself. It was not because Jesus did not like riches. Because if you are rich, it's supposed to be a blessing to others. Prosperity is not for you to have things for yourself. Prosperity is to become a distributor of good to other people. Amen. You're supposed to be, he said, I will bless you, Abraham, and you become what? A blessing. A channel of blessing. A channel where God can reach out to other less privileged people. That's what real prosperity from God is all about. It's not about so that everybody will know that I am the man. So that I will be able to dispose. You see, the, you see, the Bible says God judged a man who said his bed is full. This day he has a bumper harvest. He said, Oh my soul, eat and relax. The Bible said, God said he takes him that night. What is he going to do? If he was saying that he find out that he has so much and begin to distribute and begin to share to others, there's no way he would have died. But because it's about me. And there are some people you don't invite to this church because you don't like them. True. How many of you have people that don't want to come to your church? <laughs> you now have to go to church. Let him something. I would have taken him to my pastor, but I would not. <laughs> How many of you know where somebody can get a solution and you will not point the way? You're not going to confess. You will not talk to the person. Somebody says, I know this can probably just leave him. Let them. Let them suffer. Take him to my pastor, he will be finished, but I won't. <laughs> Take him to our church, he will be alright, but I will not. You will not because of what? Not because of anything. And there are people like that in our circles of life. They can be blessed. But you don't understand that there's so much in you. Every one of us has been programmed, created to be a child. And it's nobody that is not a blessing. The reason that you're not a blessing is because of selfishness. Because you choose not to. There are some of you that your mere smile will change somebody's life. 
Well, I will not smile with them. I will not smile with anybody. <laughs> and all what you have is a smile that can change somebody's life. But you won't smile. I don't smile with anybody. Yeah, I don't smile with anybody. Who are you? It's all about you. Your smile can change somebody. It's not always about money. Nobody can say, I don't have something. That's what you realize when you start to focus. There's nobody that will say, I don't have. Everybody has been given gifts. That's true. And those cheap gifts are supposed to bless one another. But the reason it's not manifesting in you is because of selfishness. You have limited God in you. Because it's always about you. If you're not going to get it, how many of you will see a job advert that will make your neighbor better than you? And you say, I won't even show her. Later, I also go buy this paper and read. I buy my own newspaper. I won't show them. You know somebody that can benefit from me, but you won't talk about it. Because, you know, when they also do the same way they sell baby son and spend my money to buy some to read and tell them but to go for a job. Selfishness. Some of you will not allow somebody else to grow beyond you. Anything that somebody will get through you that will make the person better than you, you will sit on it. How many of you are like me? Sit on it. You will never allow him. I would have shown him the way. No, I don't show people things. They must find out by themselves. And you are the one that God blessed there. If you are not selfish, how many people will be blessed in your circle? If you are not selfish, how many lives will be changed by your mere, you know, talking to them, showing them the way? The advertisement can see, and you know. I would have shown she has the qualification, but the way she's working as if the one is the one of the I will not show her. Because you feel jealous. How many of you have shown people favor? What you call favor? Which is something you do out of not being selfish to other people, and they become better than you, you feel bad sometimes. He came into this company through the land, every time there's someone talking to the manager. Even when you don't know what they're talking about, just talking to the manager makes him feel bad. Hello, can I have a witness in the house? It's out of selfishness. Instead of saying, No, I'm so happy for you. If you say that it's cosmetic, so happy for you if it is not because of me. If I like a good talk to those people, they will say no. How much of selfishness do you have within you that is limiting God? Don't you understand that the kingdom of God is about sowing and reaping? Whatever you do for others, God will cause men to do for you. Your selfishness has stopped you from your harvest season. And some of us have not been able to enter into our breakthrough because of selfishness. God puts you and puts your smile is a seed. You're pointing the way to other is a seed. When you point the way to somebody and somebody get blessed, even if he does not remember you, don't you know that God who seeks in secret has the capacity to reward you openly, that he will reward you. And that's why some people prosper, some don't, because they are not aligning themselves to soul seed because they are selfish. Planting is, self, is a selfless effort. Planting good things in other people's life. It takes... Hello. Amen. Selflessness to plant in other people's life. You know where he or she can go and get best. You keep quiet. How many of you have it? You're not talking to anybody. Me, I don't know anything. Inside you, you know. You know where the solution is, but you're not saying it. 
Because you don't like the person. If you get solution tomorrow, he's going to drive a car that you don't drive. Even now that he's using a bicycle, he's not talking to me. What if I, if, if, I, if he's driving a car, he won't even greet me. Must he greet you? Do it. Tell somebody, do it. Forget about it. Because to you is a seed that is going to change your entire life. The Bible says, but so ever a man sows, that he will reap. If you sow people, Favor. If you take somebody and make the person succeed in life, God will plant somebody that will take him and succeed in life. God will open the door. It is a sin. It's not sometimes all about you. Selfishness robs us from our harvest season because if we are disposed to act when we're supposed to act, disposed to give when we're supposed to give, then God said, if you give, it shall be given. <laughs> Not from the same person. He said, You will cause me to give. Praise God, she, you will cause me to give. This morning, this month, from now on, we are breaking selfishness in this church. Yeah. Yeah. I would have invited him on first Sunday. You only come to our church to eat. Hello. We cook first Sunday. That's when he wants to come to church. I don't want him to come to church. Let him come when he will listen to pastor and be and, and change. Hello. Yeah. I can be quiet. Can I have you out? You know where they're supposed to, but you don't. I'm gonna let you go. But to, today. That act selfishly so that you can change because it's not about them. When you understand it, it's not about anybody, it's about you. Mm -hmm. I don't mind doing anything for you because it's not about you, it's all about Jesus. Yes. And when I sow, I reap. It is a principle that nobody can avoid, yes. no wish can be with you. When you sow wrong things and you begin to harvest wrong things, they help you in a blessing. They join your harvest field. But if you are good, selling good seed, you will harvest good seed no matter what. They can bewitch you, they can delay you, but you will come on top. That's the power of being the head. Because you are making people succeed, you are disposed. To succeed in life, no matter what. That was the principle of Abraham. Abraham allowed Lot to succeed. When God called Abraham, Abraham went to Lot. God, Lot was not called. But when it came to time, when the Bible said there was a contention between the shepherds of Abraham and the shepherds of Lot, Abraham came out and said to Lot, Whichever one you take, I will take. Choose. I give you preference. I give you preference. That is selflessness. If it was me, my friend, go back. God did not call you a man. How many of you Go back. Take your people and go. God did not call you a man. It's my time. I don't, in fact, I disown you. I don't know my NFU. Don't follow us. I mean, that's what I would have done. I mean, if God called me, didn't call me. Then, how many of you know that God did not call Lot? Yes. He called Abraham. Yes. If I was Abraham, and then he is, he, I'm just allowing him, I'm, I'm just being nice. How many of you think that you're nice? Just being nice to him, to allow him to come with me because of his needs. His mother was good to, to my uncle, right? <laughs> I'm just allowing him. Now he's allowing his people to be in the fight. I said, hey, Lot, you know what? Go back. Go back to your people. God did not call you. This is, this, is, this is not you and me. I hear from God. You didn't hear from God. Go back. 
That's what I would have done. If he's coming to fight me in my portion. But what did Abraham do? Abraham said to the Lord, if you will go east, I will go west. I give you preference to make a choice. And he chose. And what happened? And when he got into trouble, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't even. Abraham prayed in the sea, they go for Lord. How many of you remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, I was there. Hey. No. <laughs> you want to follow me? Come and enjoy what we uh, get in the trouble. God, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. There is no righteousness. Thank you for revenge. How many of you feel to revenge sometimes? <laughs> feel like you need to revenge sometimes. When I say, God, thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Hey, hey. Lord yeah. Father, there is no righteous people in me. I have even said by myself. <laughs> there is nobody, no Sodom and Gomorrah. They are too bad. They are very, very wicked. Angel, bomb it. <laughs> Finish them. This, if I did Sodom and Gomorrah people, they are too bad. I would not even want to remember that I have a nephew not there. But Abraham interceded. God, if you see 50 people, if you see 10 people, if you see 5 people, and God said, He didn't see them. So, okay, can I go and take my. The person that fought with me, ah. I will make sure he finishes. <laughs> Finishing. Thank you. I will be doing testimony in the church. God has dealt with my enemies. <laughs> he has given me the I will lift him. I will be happy. I will come to church. Today the Lord has done a great work. He has finished all my enemies. That <laughs> contended for me. <laughs> Stand on your feet with me. Humility, selfishness is the root cause of the crisis. <laughs> May it be all about Jesus. Lift up your hands this morning. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. And I want you in the presence of the Lord. Uh, when I I sat not only studying, I sat repenting myself throughout this night because I realized some of my actions were of selfish motivations. I should not have, but I did. And I asked God to forgive me. And I asked God to help me, to deliver me from selfishness. For God so loved the world that He gave. You know, we were not righteous when he gave. We did not qualify. It was a self, selfless sacrifice. He said, if you will be my disciple, you need to take up your cross. You need to crucify self in your life. It's no longer about you. It's about Jesus. Lord, I sorry now. I wish I had a few folks in the church this morning. Who would be sincere? See, one thing I realize that when I'm sincere with God, when I'm sincere with God, God will be sincere with me. Uh, sometimes I have to tell my wife I'm sorry. I was acting self. Uh, and it doesn't make any really difference. I just need to acknowledge that I'm selfish and I need help. Uh, I didn't, I didn't need, most of my anger was out of selfish. Because when you push self, anger springs up. When selfishness, anger is a, a fruit of selfishness because I want it. You, is, there's a no go area in my life. I am protecting that place. It's for me. It's for me, not for anybody. I am selfish. When you step into that area, you provoke my anger. Lift up your hands. I surrender to Jesus.
Oh, oh.